What's going on, everybody? Rogue Hero here. In today's video, I'm bringing you guys Master Swag King and my homie Saki from Team Sakuresu. And check them out in the description down below. And we're going to be doing a market watch. You guys are going to be watching this live on my YouTube. So if you guys that watch it live on my YouTube and or the premiere, hit that like button. This video up to 100 likes. Also, if you guys love me, consider hitting the super chat down below. And man, we were actually just going over the OTS 15 stuff and seeing how crappy it is. Saki MSK, what are you guys' take on this OTS 15? All right. Like, so, actual Marvel watch? I, I was looking at this now. Uh, our Dragon armed level 10 over here. I get it because we have level 5 ultimate or level 7 ultimate rare. So it kind of completes the whole set when it comes to okay. armed dragons along with... Our latest set, you know, Blazing Vortex, has, you know, all the support for armed dragons. So I kind of get that this is an ulti. They want to push the new set. Most players don't really care about this ultimate per se, but it was understandable of why it came about. Uh, you have Neo Fiber, like, that's great. Uh, you know, it's still used in a lot of meta-relevant decks. So I completely get that one. But then you got this other one and i'm trying to figure out and i mean this in the nicest way possible what at konami were they smoking when they made this an ultimate rare you could have made ultimate <laughs> gyms, man, and they could have made it better because at least at least the Yu-Gi-Oh community could have a good <laughs> laugh before ranting this is just pathetic nobody asked for this nobody's going to care about this ultimate rare and by the way of course there's going to be a few people but yeah i think this is the probably the worst ultimate rare in my opinion in the whole entire ots franchise that could be reactionary though guys i might just sleep it over i mean that's pretty myself. much what the community is saying like, everyone's thinking is really really crappy uh -huh. ulti rare like they were like, like why pick these people some people were speculating engage yeah. like mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh, before we move on, really quickly though, on my channel, I upload like three, four times a week. Uh, I do my mar own market watches, and I also do a my own series, like five cards to have in your trade binder, where I tell you guys five cards to have in your trade binder. I was able to get my subscribers a dual terminal a dark magician before it skyrocketed if you were sub to me you got them for eights and nines before they went up to 60 whole dollars so nice. i also do openings and other Yu Gi Oh type videos so come check me out link in the description below all that and yeah msk what do you think about this ots all right so i'm good to go Ma yeah Ma you're gonna go bro. be a little longer okay so <laughs> her ots packs and ultimate rares as we don't have ultimate rares in main core booster sets anymore i live by this theory and, and, and it's actually worked out with a lot of my subscribers and they agree with me as well not that i need like yes man or anything i think i, I can lay out a pretty perfect point to reason why you should look at ots pack ultimates a certain way so we don't get ultimate rares except outside of this right so these should be good by default there should be no if ands ors or buts these should be, be just good right so right. I understand what Thomas was talking about, obviously. That does complete it. That's also for collectors who like Chaz to the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX era. That's perfectly fine. That that is a perfectly fine ultimate rare. They've had collector rare ult, like collector ultimate rares in the OTS packs in, in the past. That's fine. How could Vibrax? They usually always make sure they uh, print ultimate rares in the way of like past, present, future, past meta, a future meta, and now what we're going through right now. So people people are using okay. how could Vibrax, right? This is a, a arm dragon right now is what we currently have right now which is from blazing vortex which is a set that they're supporting i don't know like did konami like did an employee jump on, get on a bridge take off all their clothes and backflip butt naked when they made us as an ultra rare because this Thank is because this is getting reprinted if no one knows if you go and look up ghosts in the past on like Wikipedia, that's getting reprinted in that set as an ultra rare so why are you gonna make it an ultra rare that's just a, 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 like it's just a wasted slot in my oh, personal yeah. opinion you shouldn't be wasting ultimate rares we, we 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 get like what like three of these a year so we get like, maybe <laughs> like nine ultimate rares a year you really you're wasted. <laughs> yeah like you're wasted on this are you serious oh my Man, god I'll be honest, it feels like we have two ultis like the more i look at this on my <laughs> screen the more disgusted i am like I'm, I'm just being honest here like anybody that likes ultimate rares live by this and it'll make you look at them differently you should be by default had better ultimate rares because right. we only get so few of them so if, I, and people are gonna uh, go, well, well, these other ultimate rare, yeah, that, it doesn't matter. We only get like twelve or nine of them. I'm just giving a base number. So also, as you guys, you guys probably know me because I've been on the channel for like literal years. I'm a master of King Entertainment. Uh, obviously, I do Yu-Gi-Oh market watches all every single day. So the average person does them ten minutes. I like to make mine like twenty five to thirty minutes. Sometimes I've had two hour market watches. It just depends on how the day goes, obviously um as you guys already know now i have Yu-Gi-Oh content and then i also have like other content in terms of like trailer reactions i have my own other podcast i live stream every single tuesday 
uh, every single week at 8.30 p.m. PST. For market watches, so people are going to probably ask me, what, what good did you do? So for a lot of things that I predicted that ended up being correct, it was by a lot of cards. Most people have generally told me that they were trash. Every single thing I, I've been told, I talked about those cards in my market watches. They all went up in value. I even had someone today hit, hit me up and say, hey, I made him a lot of money just today before, before this video even started. Really? Nice. Yeah. So I'm going to go over his comment in my own channel when I do my own market watch. So, yeah, if you guys want market watches literally every single day, not those 10-minute 10, 10 generic bullshits the other fucking tubers give you. And, you know, <laughs> come down to Big Big Daddy over here. <laughs> come down to Big Daddy. I already, I already <laughs> killing my monetization with the curse. And let's go on to the actual uh, market watch cards. Go over it. All right. So what, so what else you got? What you guys need here? Because I will give it to you right now. Go to the next tab. Go to the next tab. Yeah. What what do you mean? All right. All right. So this is one of Saki's picks. He wanted to go over this for the um, market watch. Trishula Dragon of the Iceberg coming at $318. Do you buy or do you sell? What do you think, Saki? So we are getting the Ice Barrier structure deck, I believe, this month in February. Uh, we have a few of the confirmed picks. Uh, I know we have like Crackdown, which is really good. They also have like Fiendish Chain in there, which makes no real sense to me. Uh, but I kind of see what they're trying to do. They're trying to like say, oh, you can bounce these trap cards with like, I think one of the synchros, right? I get it. I like the crackdown reprint. But point is, since we're getting the ice barrier structure deck, a lot of these higher rarity uh, of the uh, ice barrier cards, they're going to keep going up. And obviously, Trishula is the fan favorite ice barrier card. So we have DTs at 318. What's the first listing? Yeah, is that for near mint or is that for like a light play version? Uh, that's for a near mint version. However, there's also the ultimate rares I actually want to peep out. I personally told people to grab these in a five card time in your trade binder when they were $60. Okay. Uh, not only for any ice barrier support, but because this is probably one of the most, they, it's probably the most optimal level nine synchros. So now they're sitting at 150. And I just want to point out that this was bought out last year at $600. Ooh. And I was able to <laughs> sell one of mine for 400 in uh 40 bucks i think mm -hmm. and it was it was insane so if you guys want to get like the second best version of trish unless you want to count the starlight rare in blazing vortex since that's also a pretty big contender i would get this copy however if you are a budget player we also have the hidden arsenal 4 version which i believe we have at the next tab right uh, this is the og printing i remember people were buying boxes back in the day uh to pull this card uh, near mints are six dollars. First ed near mints are going to be about twenty eight dollars. But there's some first ed light plays there for less than ten dollars. Like there's one there for eight bucks. So I would maybe grab those really cheap first ed light plays before this goes up to a thirty dollar card. Oh yeah, that makes sense as well because with the structure that coming out, things are likely to go up. And I didn't know I didn't know that card got bought out last year for six hundred bucks. That's insane. Yeah, yeah, like so um people were under this like stupid mentality when I was talking about ulti Trish. I would kind of feature in almost every single video. I was like, why is this 40? But this was all sometimes 40 to 50 dollars, which is crazy. And then you also have to factor in, like, just because this is the highest rarity doesn't mean these won't ever have any price valuations either. Because like your value doesn't de determine what you'll okay. So how 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 would how would I phrase this? What you can buy is not a big selling point for a lot of other people too. Because what if I if, if I can't buy that, then the next one goes up in value, right? That that that's just by default. Because we can also prove that because looking at the high speed riders, Trishula, right here, the secret rare, this one's what eight dollars. So if someone can't afford the dual terminal or the ultimate, that's gonna go up in value as hell. Oh yeah, that's how work. And that's also a short print. When that thing came out, that was a short print. And you also hit it also in a four version. That literally, is, I that that surprised me because I'm looking at it right now. That, that, that's yeah, that's actually bought out because the first edition your mint were like eight some dollars a few days ago. Like yep. the first and I told people to pick them up back then. Rem Listen, this might not be the one of the highest versions of Trish compared to DT Ulti. Uh, and you know starlight rare, but still the OG printing of Trish in Hidden Arsenal 4 So that's the version I told people to get looks like some people are listening if you guys are watching this video I would check if those light for, first set light plays are still available because at eight dollars. That's a steal Oh, yeah <laughs> also, People are probably gonna actually factor in this too when you're looking at a card and I, I always do this and it's been working out very well if you're trying to make money off the card, anything that, that goes on the bottom, like down here, Stavar card has a ton of printings, right? This is just an example, obviously. Don't get any of those. Unless, unless you just want it for a budget version, whatever. If you're trying to make some money, you would only factor in these versions because a lot, a lot of people will go, well, 
but I but this version is the highest rating. I like this one. It, it's not about what you prefer. It, that's not how this works. There's no if, ands, right. or buts. That's the highest version. But the other version also has money too. But the facts right here say this is the most. This is the version with the most money put into it. So this is more or less so high risk, high reward. Or you could go high risk, high reward in another rarity that you know people would like so it's like if you bring if you come up to me right now and you give me an ultimate rare rare trish obviously i would take it right right, right. oh you're you i'd probably freak out why are you giving me a yugi card who are you, you get in my house? Like i'd have i i wouldn't take it dude i i, I, sh I shit you not oh fuck god sorry about that i i kid you not so remember when uh you know people said they wouldn't want certain cards like unlimited in your mint like ghost rares i told one of my subscribers if i walked up to you and i give you an unlimited in your mint Start a strike and go for it right now. Would you take it? He was like, no, I'm like, you're capping. You are straight, <laughs> you are a straight up liar. So, Definitely that, capping. so the point of what I'm trying to bring up is it's not always about the highest rarity, but you have to kind of factor in if you're trying to make money, you have to only yeah. really look at these specific versions. Uh, nope. Before we move on, just a quick question today. If you guys can answer this in the comment section below, what is your favorite high rarity version of Trish compared to like the ulti, DT, and Starlight, which the Starlight looks DT. great. You gotta be DT. Uh, honestly, your boy loves Ultimate Rare way too much. Like I'm team, I'm team LT Trish. I'm yeah. team DT. I always like the D that dual um, To be fair, we are we're talking from a biased perspective. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In our opinion with a great assault. Yeah. <laughs> so we have Cyber Dragon, the 2006 Collector's 10 Secret Rares. Limited like the plays are like 996. Limited Ooh. near mints are at oh, these are spiking even further. $36 for a limited near mint 2006 Cyber Dragon Collector's 10 secret rare i remember when that 10 first came out it was pretty right? hyped because uh -huh. cyber dragon was such a short printed super rare back in cybernetic revolution i can see this car somewhat going up as a collector's value because of the original artwork of cyber dragon mm -hmm. i personally wouldn't get it i personally like the alternate art cyber dragon the evil one that one looks 10 times That's better than me favorite. That is my favorite i will say though there were light plays there for like 10 to 13 dollars Honestly, I'd rather have a place of light plays than just one near mint, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, it's just more, it's more value overall, so I would definitely grab All some right. of cheap All right. plays. Remember, this card has been bought out, by the way, before. I, I'll show you a buyout. The gold rare, Cyber Dragon. Oh, no. They bought out a gold rare one? Oh, it's no. No, no, don't do this. <laughs> don't give me hope. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. That just got you having fun. Crack had a nice <laughs> Cyber Dragon coming out of premium gold, the gold rare, unlimited lightning plate is 348. Unlimiting your mints are going to be about $5. That's crazy. And probably, like, I'll be uh, Listen, guys, I'm oh, not going to make fun of you if you like this version, but you probably are into feet as well. That's wait. all I'm going to say. Hey, hey, hey. Like I, 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 like, hey like I'll, show you an, I'll show you another Cyber Dragon bot. It's right here in front of your face. The dual terminal one cyber dragon the rare copies are 35 dollars uh i got a place set right here so i'm good hey you give give it to me for free <laughs> personally, i mean honestly so you think do you guys think that first cyber dragon's worth picking up i personally would just sell it I, honestly I, no i'm a sucker for the alternate art well, well, let's it, look at the original supers, actually. Well, because well, 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 it boils down to what we just had in Trishula. So people who can't get these up here, they're just going to start going for these right here. And if that doesn't happen, you're, they're going to always go down to what the lowest is, right? So for right. Cyber Dragon, since there's so many different printings, anything that's not, like, deemed too, like bad or has some decent level of value thrown already into it will get bought. Like the Gold Rares, right? You saw right there. The Dual Terminal ones. The Dual Saga ones right here. The Dual Saga ones. This just came out, what, like, two years ago? This one's already currently at, like, Four dollars. I fact, and it's already on almost page two is almost gone. Like right here. Like yeah, you have people. Yeah, that's literally almost gone. I so, think like, people yeah. also forgot forget. And I did this uh, very quick story back in uh, the 2019 Chicago YCS. It's where Luna Lights took first place. I actually faced one of the buddies uh, of that guy. But I remember round one. Um, I always I text in Cyber Dragon one copy with Cameratech, right? Because you can easily get rid of your opponent's, you know. Uh, did we play each other at that event, Saki? I feel like no. I played you before. No, you, no, we didn't play each other. I got the round. I'm nine. for sure I've played you somewhere at a locals or something before. Oh no, like, you you have you have. <laughs> you played for a girl. <laughs> Nah. <laughs> I remember playing. I remember his glasses. That's why. It's his glasses that I remember. <laughs> I, I, sell, I, used to sell I used to sell glasses for you guys. <laughs> I mean, All right. glasses. But yeah, so I remember first round one, right? I had this tech and I was like, you know, I played this. It was really good. Issue was I went up against a guy playing pure Cyber Dragon. Okay. 
And I, I remember round two, I was able to wipe his board completely, except for the one infinity. I, I literally took all his cards. I'm like, I'm making Chimera Tech. Because <laughs> I had in the extra and he didn't know. Dude, his face sunk completely, right? Because he had like a, I think a three negate board. So I did that. And then I had Chimera Tech on board. I still had my five cards in hand. I wiped his board without using any cards. Then I Widow anchored his infinity. And oh, it was just fun from there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I felt so bad. But yeah, keep going. All right. Tour guide from the Underworld Ultimate Rare coming out of Astro Pack 6. One. Unlimited near mints are at 185. Unlimited Levy Plates are 153. Oof. Yeah. Oof. I, man, I remember when these were like 60, 70 Bro, I remember when the original ones was like 150. Yeah. I remember it too. I pulled one and then I, I traded it for a Super Rare Hero card. I didn't, I didn't know value back back then. Oh man, you got ripped out. You got you were you were one of those. No, 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 no. The guy, t ugh, we we had to talk about it. We we didn't know. It's like this is before I knew Yu Gi Oh prices. We just didn't know. We we're like, fuck, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Right. Fair so, enough. Fair enough. Ulti Tour Guide. Ulti Tour Guide's price always depends on burning abyss. Yeah. It really only does. But to be fair, if we're talking like past formats, people did use this in past formats. I've been noticing past formats getting a lot popular, and I've been under this theory for a long time. If you guys have watched my market watches this. Yeah. Not just go format will be the only popular pass format because as many older boomers will say, well, Yu-Gi-Oh nowadays is trash back in my day. Well, <laughs> that eventually might be the mentality. People might just actually go back and play pass formats like go format. So if you factor in all the go cards, people have highest rarity, max rarity, or a lot of money. Why can't that be the same? The same thing with a lot of people. They, they want to play, oh, play that legacy BA this, format. This one day might might oh, be like this hundred dollars. Yeah. Whenever no, one person. Uh, so I know a couple people. I know um at one of the locals I go to. It's a great locals multiple people there and they'll do it after the tournament right and i actually because they're extremely kind people right so ryan if you're watching this shouts to you they uh let me borrow their deck and it was so fun playing glad format versus light swarm that was just super <laughs> oh, cool man. because also has the old lumina errata right and that's another thing people really like is you get to play that with priority. cards that may have been eroded but their original effects and, and that's, that's something that priority, like. that priority uh, is too strong like how yeah. effects like that too strong? Or was this <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then there's post dual alliance format. Now Fair that's enough. a ride. All right. The uh, blue eyes white dragon. This is the so there's several different jump versions. So like a there's a re jump version. There's the like the other jump version you guys know and love. This one right here is there's no near mids here because they're all lightly played. Starting at sixty, ending at like one. 39 that 99. shows that you need if you want this card you should uh you should get it probably right now uh, <laughs> that's, that's, all, that, that's what that means yeah. yeah i i really do honestly that's okay. just me personally oh very quickly guys um i do a lot of stock market stuff so when i came back into the game and i looked at this it was kind of like especially since i vended a little bit before you know i left the game uh i was like oh this is really easy so i have that knowledge kind of on my channel too these are the other other jump versions. It, it just depends on which one you want. I would personally get this one already. Like, Wasn't that, that was the World Championship artwork, right? Or no? Yeah, because you also have the jump that. version they released. There's the re-jump version, and then there's one like that you just said. And you also have this one, which is, let's see, let me take the light, lightly plays, like 24, or oh, 40. I would just grab these two, honestly. Yeah, it's set on them. It's going to be classic right. collector yeah. items. Uh, can we look at the PCK version for fun? Uh, I mentioned oh, uh, yeah. in my five cards having your trade binder to get the PCK version because you were able to get light plays for, I believe, around $70. Um, you know, and near mint's quickly going up to $100. So I told people to get light play or near mint. You know, always aim for near mint more. But people really underestimate light play in the Yu Gi Oh community. Oh, yeah, light play. You most near mint, it comes light play, and you say, eh, anyway. Yeah, so I got my most people don't care about light play anyway. It's I got my first lightly played card. Literally just in my last mail day video. It, it came actually pretty good condition, honestly. There's a few little specs here or there, but it came in pretty good, honestly. You might have a couple scratches and maybe a nick here. And yeah, no scratches on it, dude. It came in almost yeah. as perfect. It had a little bit of those white things on it. Like, you know how like just cards get like that? That was right. pretty much it. So you have the, this one here, the DDS. No, nah, yeah, there's DDS one as well. 2,700 bucks, bro. I have a friend of no, $200,000. $200,000. $200, that's literally a mortgage payment. Are you guys paying that? Bro, uh, that's no. that's, a, that's a Lamborghini, man. Uh, <laughs> that's bro, that that's Miami. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. like, well, oh, it might just it might go up though. Honestly, DDS yeah. blue eyes. It's, it's probably gonna go yeah. up. Let's be real. So, you also forgot to check PCK. That was just destiny up there. Oh, power of chaos. Oh yeah. So yeah. power of chaos. Um, blue eyes were actually pretty cheap for a while. They were like seventy some bucks for a bit. 
I should have probably got one, but hey, you know, some people don't always take their best ideas, honestly. <laughs> yep. 16 yeah. listings, by the way. You really want to look at listings below 25. Near mints, $250. Man, yeah. I'm glad I got mine at like, what, 40? I got. I actually believe it, I have two of these because I I'm really just like glad I told my subscribers to get it at, at seventy bucks. Like literally, if you're a collector of these blue cards, five cards have your trade binder, and every oh, time oh, I have man. five cards have your trade binder, two of the cards usually get bought out. So Spend over, over promoting market manipulation. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 do you want to win? Come to my channel. Wait, like, like, do you want to make? Do you want to make money? I like to lose. Yeah. I, I like to be homeless, broke, no water, no electricity. That's what I like to have. Yeah. And you're wearing the C9 jacket. I don't think so. <laughs> Being like to freak. Dude, have you guys ever, ever seen radio? I want to be like that guy pushing a stop car the street. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> um, if, you're, if you're a collector and you got to factor in, wait, I, do I have enough blue eyes? You know, you'll never have enough. Let's be, you'll never have enough. Just get it. Just literally stop what you're doing right now. Stop having sex with, with your wife and just come and get, get this card. That's it. That's all you got to do. You'll, you'll thank me out. later. Speaking of a, of an actual good OTS pack with good ultimate rares, I mean, still play to this Speaking day. Of <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, which card do you guys want, actually? So, I want to go over. Let's go over the ultis. Let's go over Judgment really quickly. Okay. So, Solemn Judgment, right? A collector's card, a meta relevant card, right? Solemn Judgment is something that kind of hits every single bubble when it comes to you, the Yu Gi Oh community, right? Collectors to meta players, right? Ultimate rares are about what seventy dollars, seventy two, right here. Scroll a little bit down for me. Yeah. Uh, I always like to look at listings as well. Near Mets, yeah, about $71. Uh, the, I'm telling you guys to pick this up because when it comes to stuff like Solemn Warning and Solemn Strike, we see Solemn Strike at about $135, which we could pull it up here in a second as well. We've seen Solemn Warning, Ultimate Rares, First Eds going up to like $150, right? Judgment is uh, and arguably the best out of the three. Obviously, Strike is better at times, right? Since, Depends on the know, format. Yeah, it depends on format, what you're going up against, et cetera, et cetera. And this card is only half the value. And this is usually hits more, you know, more decks, right? A lot more people would probably argue that this is the strongest out of the three. Again, like Rogue said, depends on the format. But only $70 for this. And this is an older OTS pack. We're on OTS 15 now. If you guys don't have your ulti judgments, get them before they go up to a hundred dollars. OTS that fifteen counts. So you definitely so you're so you're, so you're pr basically protecting us to hold on to this right now. Oh yeah, or grab it if you don't have it because this will easily hit to strike ultimate rare strike prices. Uh, we could bring up strike in a second here. Yeah. All right. So what I was gonna say about this card is you gotta kind of factor in every single solemn card that isn't as good as this one or doesn't have the longevity is higher than this card. See, factor in if strike and warning are higher than this card, and this card right here is could literally see playing any format, give or take. Well, this one's already insanely cheap. So you factor in if two of them already have insane value, it's gonna be just at, at some point it is gonna happen. Now, I'm not saying it's gonna happen right now, and that's with any thing in the market. I want to make sure I preference this to anybody because their brain might actually start screeching at their phone. You gotta kind of factor in. This is all just opinion. I'm gonna put that out there. It's all opinion. So you, he wanted to sell him strike ultimate, right? So yeah, just, just to compare it really quickly here, uh, because I believe these are 135. Last time I checked for English copies, like what 140, something like that. Uh, I thought it was 135, eh? 145. Hey, Oops. even higher, 145. So, oh my god, okay. that's where judgment's gonna be one day. So, I'm, I would I'm, definitely I'm, grab this, right? I'm oh, just yeah, genius. I'm just you a market watch god. As you guys already know, make that, long, make that good long term investment. <laughs> as you guys already know, I'm a market watch god. <laughs> look at the ghost, look at the ghost, ghost rare one as well. Yeah, look, bring up the ghost rare asylum. Oh, the ghost well. rare yeah. is so good. I actually told people that's the second best version again. I love the ghost rare, very underrated. I got mine at sevens because I love that card. Uh, Solemn Judgment Ghost Rare coming to Gold Series Haunted Mind. The Ghost Gold Rare is twenty five dollars. Yep, that's, that, definitely that's a grab. Up. It's that's, literally that's, a grab. Easy a grab. Ghost Rare. Ghost Rare. How many Ghost Rare? I would personally I would grab a playset of both. How many? How many Ghost Rares you know are twenty five dollars? The average one is like forty. Yeah. <laughs> That's for a already a really good card. Definitely As you guys already know, I'm the Market Watch God. If you guys don't know that, these two are my my sons and my. <laughs> Apparently, man. Apparently, <laughs> these guys are my kids, though. I gotta make make sure I'm raising my my kids right, you know. <laughs> yeah, you gotta raise us us Midwesterners right, man. <laughs> when the recording stops. You're about to get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like, I, I always tell everyone, everyone's trash but me. That's how it works. All right. I'm smiling for this guest upload on this channel. As you guys already know, every single form of back row removal, ultimate rare that, that they printed in sets like these have gone up in value. Ulti MST, Cosmic Cyclone. There's another one I'm, I'm forgetting right now that has gone up in value. Twin Twister's ultimate coming out, Ultis Turn Pack 12 is 60 bucks. That won't be there very long. I'm just I, saying I that right now. Drop. I can see that dropping. Only because Twin really? Twister is not... Twin Twister is not that good of a card in this format, honestly. Not to me, as from a competitive player standpoint, mm -hmm. I would much rather play Cosmic Cyclone. A lot of people are siding out Harpy's Feather Duster, so if they're doing that, there's no reason to, you know, really have this card, per se. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's necessarily bad, but, but the way I see it, though, is it has been bought out to $80 before. I told people the best time to get this was when they were about 40 or $45. Now that you see them at 60 here, it's not that they're necessarily a bad pickup, but for $60, you could grab better investments. I believe that getting two of those Ghost Saul investments, right. even that $10, that's better than having one Ultimate or Twin Twister. Uh, especially since it's also hard to get rid of this as a singular card. Most people are going to look for play sets, although if you have two, it shouldn't be too bad, but yeah I, I i would probably it's not a bad car to have you should already have had i mean in my it, opinion but... in my opinion it doesn't it's not going to hold the same weight as like an as an ulti mystical space typhoon for example i'm pretty sure mm -hmm. that one's still pretty pricey like yeah. twin twist it's player preference on the competitive market however most players will tell you based on the format right now so many traps have graveyard effects and so many spells have graveyard effects cosmic cyclones ultimately the better card yeah. Now, eventually, obviously, Cosmic Cyclone is going to get power crept to it. Probably something you pay 2000 banish two cards on the board. But until that happens, Cosmic Cyclone is probably going to be way more expensive one day. Didn't they? Right. You have uh, Chaos Dragon, Levinair, Ultimate Bear coming out of OTS Turn Pack 12. This one is 37 bucks. Now, this one's consistently had up and down value. I don't really know how to really judge so, it personally. This is how I'm going to judge it. It's an Ultimate that has a buy low, sell high type mentality. Because right. I've seen this card at like sixty dollars mm -hmm. and then i've seen it drop back down to this and something in between so often this is a car that's not very consistent right however i never see it lower than about 35 dollars. that's the lowest i've ever seen seeing how it's at an all-time low right now this is a car that i would suggest maybe look at if if you want to definitely pull the trigger it just depends on how the format really looks and what it's used in and a card like this that is not only a great chaos card but searchable Right, especially by like Meta Dex, because it's very easy to search a dragon card. But it's also very generic, having three effects that are only light. You special some uh, summon one monster in the graveyard in defense position. Dark one random card in your opponent's hand to the deck. That's that's especially the biggest reason to play. You could loop with this, right? And getting mm -hmm. one card out of your opponent's hand can sometimes just make the duel for you. And then both light and dark destroy up to two cards on the field. So the fact that it has like a dual purpose type of thing is really good. Going first or second. So I I'd probably grab this card in judgment. Definitely way over Twin Twisters. And that's oh yeah, I'm most gonna... definitely. And not to mention as well, this card's playability is going to determine on how good Dragon Link can do. Because a lot of Dragon decks still run that card. Or well, at least they were. I haven't checked the newer builds recently. Yeah. But they were at one point. Man, Everything the else in the set is so good too. It, right? for, for the especially for the time yeah uh mm -hmm. you know prime being token you know that's gonna age like fine wine grand oh, yeah. now that's a that's a favorite Os uh, I, I like Hara, the this one Hara is my favorite tech serpent of endymion so. is my is, is the more the most better better one to me personally dude, people were raving just because dude people i have people tell me this was the best ots pack and all they could mutter was endymion that's the only <laughs> thing they could mutter. i was like ulti solid judgment's not cool they're like yeah God. But that Endymion, though, I'm like, get your ass <laughs> out of here. Like, I just, uh, honestly, I brought this up because uh, Mr. Uh, Rogue Hero, Innovation YGO, Yup Boy, whatever yeah, he chooses to go by now, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, MSK pick some stuff. I was like, oh, man, God, say no more, honestly. I mean, these are honestly all good long-term investments. The, the title of the video is definitely going to be long -term, good long-term investments. All right, let's, let's try to wrap it up with one, one more final card, guys, as for a good long-term right, investment. So guys what do you guys think for? about the Starlight Rares in um, Rising Rampage? If you he's... want them, you kind of just missed your opportunity. Besides, I guess, the Marincess one, uh, I'll tell you guys a regret of mine. Storm Dragon's Return was always a $60 Starlight Rare. Does everyone remember that? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Straight up doubled. Uh, fun fact, on my channel, we actually pulled the first ever Prismatic on camera, at least on when it comes to YouTube. Uh, it was the Marinta Seahorse in the very first pack. And I remember we got rid of it for like 300 something dollars. 
That's crazy. Yeah. That day, we picked up ulti greeds, ulti hero stuff. We, we picked up a lot. If you're looking at Appaloosa, Starlight Rare, coming out of Rising Rampage, this is, what, $749? The, the issue with the Rising Rampage Starlight Rares is that... You know how, like, we have the very first, like, Ghost Rares like that? Yeah. You, gotta, have, yeah. Yeah, you have to kind of factor in. These first Starlight Rares are going to hold, like, a history piece in Yu-Gi-Oh! To a certain extent. So, to be fair, if you actually bought this, I wouldn't really blame you, though, honestly. I think the reason why it's six thirty nine because the card is actually good and still playable. That's the and reason he, why it's yeah. six thirty nine. <laughs> Once it gets power crept, it's gonna go down to a solid four hundred bucks, maybe, maybe five hundred, just because it's rare. But you do yeah. you do make a good point of it being a good history piece, though. I can definitely see people wanting to get it just for that. That card is oh. a mystery piece. Like if you got the money, like I tell people, my marker watches, buy it, sit on it, see what happens. However, I don't think it's gonna go down. I don't think you're going to make big money off of it anytime soon to sell this it. This is what it. I would say for Opelosa, because that's about $650, $700, right? You could get better Starlight Rares. Like, for example, I would get two Starlight Rare Hitas, right? Uh, instead, maybe three, because Hita is something that it's not really good. Not only is it a Charmer card and a Waifu card, so it could go up just like because every other Charmer has went up to the $400 mark at one point. Hita is at 200 So you got three of those, 600 Boom, that's 1200 along with Hita, and tell me if I'm wrong here, is probably the most competitive charmer since everybody plays Ash. So you can, you know, make it with Ash or whatever, and then bring back your opponent's Ash, link off, combo, all that. Strikers definitely play it. So I, I, I would probably say if you want to get some Starlights for money-wise, I, I would go, I would put all my eggs in one basket with Apples. I'll, I'll disagree with that. I'd rather get different starlight and that's fair we don't always have to agree and honestly that's good that we don't always agree on the everything because i don't want this to be no circle jerk like hey i agree with you i agree with you i want to all have i want to jerk you off what <laughs> sorry all right last zodiac last card. this is the last, last card <laughs> this is the last yeah. card you suck all right zodiac dryden coming out of raging tempest secret versus as you guys already know zodiacs are really used right now in the zodiac elderly and among other variants and other decks if you guys actually have zodiac cards go and look at them because this one's like Two dollars and eleven cents, right? So you're probably thinking like, "Oh, that's not not a lot of money, right?" What are what are the other ones? So the Tiger Mortar, the Ultra coming out Raging Tempest is roughly around four dollars. Every like a lot of these Zuda cards, most people would not care to look at. Just check them out. They're actually oh, yeah. some money. All that value is going to add up. Just saying, if you have two of these, that's already like what six dollars. Adding in the Dryden, that's nine dollars. Or, or, or even if you want to sell. What are your thoughts on that stock? Zuda a good pickup. <sighs> it's like I. I'm just looking at two dollar original Drydens, and I'm like, why is that so low? Uh, I'll be honest, getting that out of everything else is pretty good. But they slowly started reprinting the Zodiacs because they see what players want. And everything this happened with uh, Chakanai, right? Chakanai was going up to seventeen dollars, right? Oh yeah, they you're right. Maximum gold, and it dropped like a flat cake, man. All right, <laughs> I think Tiger Mortar. Same thing's gonna happen. I will get the originals. Right, but I would go for the cheaper originals like Dryden. Definitely, especially because there there's some very odd, weird didn't Dryden get an alter like that format, and they love playing zoo format, AK Solitaire. Like it's it is what it is. Hmm. Didn't Dryden didn't Dryden get an alter alter reprint as well? Uh Dryden. No, uh, no, I, it has the Mega Pack secret, I believe. It's got it got, it got a maximum. So Chalk and I and um, Dryden got the Goldware reprints. Actually, I've no, never seen the well, Goldware the back gold okay. IRL. Oh <laughs> gosh! Like actually, you look at original uh, Chalk and I as our last card. I just want to look at what it dropped to. Yeah, go ahead. Even for the video, I'm just curious myself. Forty <laughs> cent maximum golds. <laughs> These <laughs> things were hitting like almost twenty dollars. Three dollars. So listen, if you want the OG Chalk and Ions, two dollars. This is when I would pick them up. So that's all I gotta say. A good pickup. All right, guys. So this is my um, market watch and my homies um, MSK and um, Team Sakurasu. Once again, you guys can find their. Um, them in the comments down below in the order description as well. You guys have any more things to say before we end the video? Uh, uh, I would, I'm just going to say uh, I hit 12. Huh? I've been Yu-Gi-Oh! for about a year and a half, maybe a little longer than that. And I'm at 1,200 subscribers. So hopefully you guys can come out, get me a little higher, you know, enjoy the content. All that. I would love to see you guys there. I actually have 
all right i don't care if i sound cocky i got the best community all right like my comment section is always popping so come to my channel get some good discussions get some good market watches series openings just a quick thing i actually forgot to mention i like to open up a lot of older school stuff and ots packs so when i got an opening it's gonna be a banger and that's that's all i gotta say come check me out nice. All right, so um, these guys are trash compared to me. Just <laughs> being honest here, like um, if you guys want videos every single day, whether it be Yu-Gi-Oh content or the other new content that I have, if you like longer form content in terms of podcasts, I have those all the time. Also, if you guys want different market watch picks than these guys have, because I have a different mentality when it when it comes to looking at these teams, come subscribe, Master Swiking Entertainment. I'm gonna be hitting three thousand subscribers very very soon. I'm like 180 off from the goal. So, you know, that's pretty good, honestly. And you guys know me anyway. So you're going to be seeing like, who is this good looking dude? Well, that's me right here. Yeah. Wait, this guy. Wait, what wild good boy, man. Wild boy. <laughs> that's the biggest lie you've told for a long time. <laughs> All right, man. Rogue Hero signing out. Peace, guys. Peace. Bye.